Welcome back aliens, my name is Savin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Django. Now till this point we were able to work with database, okay so when I say database we only got a database and a table, no data. So of course I want to push some data in the database. Now basically we can do that by two ways. One by creating a page where, you, where a user can push data or we can have an admin page. So normally admin page is normally accessed by admins or the super users. And then when you say users, let's say when you talk about Facebook, you can push data. So you are a normal user and you are able to push data. But here we are working with destination page, right? Uh, so this will be pushed by the agents or the admins. So let's do that. So let's create an admin page. Okay, the moment you say we need to create an admin page, it will be a complex task, right? We have to uh, design a page and then we have to do some authentication stuff as well. Since we are working with super users, it will be critical, right? Let's see how that works. So let's get back to our page and here, so if you want to access the website, this is how you are doing it, right? And if you want to access the admin page, you simply have to say localhost colon 8080 slash admin. And the moment you say enter, maybe it will not work. So because we, the server is not running, let's get back here and let's run our server first. So you can see we got a page where it is asking for the login. Now we have not designed this page. Now this is given by Django, so that's great. So maybe Django only gives you the design, not the actual working. Let's try. First of all, it's asking you for the username and password. Now we don't have a username and password with us. Now since I'm working on this laptop with the same Django framework, with the same browser, that's why it is able to pick the name. But for you, it will not pick that. So it will be blank for you. So we need to create a super user. How do we do that? So for that, we need to go back to your Visual Studio code, or VS code, and here, let's create a super user. But how? So to create a super user, we can simply say python manage.py and this is where you have to pass a command. Now I don't know the command, so I will simply say help. The moment you say help, it will give you a lot of options. You can see uh, we have used run server, we have used collect static and then migration, migrate. Here we need to use create super user. So we'll say python manage.py and here we'll say create super user. The moment you say enter, it will ask you for the name of the super user. Now since I'm not doing this for the first time and that's why I'm getting this username and option, but if you are doing this for the first time, it will give you username option and it will say, do you want to go for default name, whatever name, default name you select. Uh, so I will, I will go for Naveen or maybe this time I should go for something else. I will say Kiran and the email address I will be using is connect at the rate telisco.com I will say enter it will ask you for the password I will say one two three four enter now this is not a password anyone should keep as a super user but since we are just trying out let's try now it says the password which you are using is not good it's not strong it's too short it's too common it's, it's entirely numeric we don't care I will say why and done you got your super user Okay, but what's the username? It's Kiran and the password is 1234. Let's go back. Here I will say Kiran and 1234. Click and login. Done. You can see that we got a admin user here and we'll say, okay, save. When I click on users, now since, as I mentioned, I'm using this for the second time. So we already have a user Naveen here. Uh, so you will get only one user if you're doing it only once. Uh, since I've done this for the second time, so we got Kiran as well. And you can click on Kiran and you can simply specify the values here, the first name, last name, and then uh, you can specify if the user is active. You can set the permissions here. You can see we have a lot of options available and that's done. Let's go back to home. So we got users, we can add more users, we can change the permissions, all this stuff by, we have options here. In fact, you can also create groups. But we don't want to add users, we don't want to add group as of this, at this point, we want to add more destinations, right? We want to work with database, destination part. How will I do that? So I want to create a way to add destinations in the database, so that means we have to get a page. But do we have to? So if you go back to your Visual Studio, you can see apart from all these files in your app, we have one more file which is admin.py. Here, we just need to register the model and automatically it will give you the page you don't trust me right let's see so first of all we need to get the model here so we'll say from dot models and we have to import uh, destination and then once you got the import you just have to register it to register we have to say admin in fact the function name is register itself but it belongs to admin dot site 
dot register and in bracket in that function bracket you have to pass the model name which is destination in this case and I guess job is done. So just by doing that if I go back to my browser and if I say refresh can you see that we got a destinations as the tab here if I click on destinations you can see we don't have any destination now let's add but before the adding because see when you click on add it will ask you for name the images folder description and price we can do that and it you can also specify is it the offer or no we can do that so when you say images now these images are coming from the users it doesn't matter is it admin or normal users we have users who are passing the images and the earlier case we have worked with the static resources and for that we were having a different folder as assets but this time we have to go for a different folder because this will be users data how will you do that uh, so we'll see that in the next video how to work with media and how to push the media content from here in the media folder and how to access that so i hope you are enjoying this series because it's amazing right whatever we are doing you can simply create a website very easily in a day by using django with all these features so let me know your thoughts in the comment section how things are going and that's it uh, so see you in the next video where we'll talk about how to work with media content bye bye everyone